Now we're going to analyze the effect of a positive externality on a market. So remember, a positive externality means that some group outside of our consumers and our producers are benefiting from this product. So no longer does demand represent the full benefit of the product to society. In fact, demand will underestimate the full benefit of the product because it only represents the benefit of the product to the consumer. Instead, we want to calculate our marginal social benefit, which includes both the benefit to the consumer, that's demand, and any external benefit, our marginal external benefit. So that's this marginal external benefit, M-E-B. And you'll also notice that here we have our marginal social benefit curve on our graph as well. To find our marginal social benefit curve, we simply add the external benefit to the demand curve. Now, this external benefit can be constant as it is in this case, or it can not be constant. It could be increasing, for example, as we'll see in, in a future video. So here you can see that our marginal external benefit is constant because our demand curve is parallel to our marginal social benefit curve. What has happened is we've simply added on the marginal external benefit, shifting our demand curve out to be this marginal social benefit curve. All right, so what does this all mean? So we know what's gonna happen if we have a free market with no correction of the externality, supply equals demand, right? So this point here is the market equilibrium quantity and price, supply equals demand. The problem is that we're not taking into account in that situation, the full benefit of this product. So what would be socially optimal Yeah, I'm going to write this up here. Socially optimal is to produce as long as the benefit to everyone in society is higher than the cost. So this point here is the socially optimal outcome. Okay, what does that mean? So you can see that the market equilibrium quantity is too low because the private market fails to take into account the external benefit. It underestimates the true benefit of the product So our market equilibrium quantity will be less than what would be socially optimal. We wanna think about how surplus looks at these two points. So we wanna compare surplus at the market equilibrium to surplus at the socially optimal point. And here it's important to um, take into account any external cost or benefit in our calculation of surplus. So our total surplus is really our consumer surplus plus our producer surplus plus any external benefit. All right, so let's think about what that looks like at the market equilibrium. 
and I'm going to kind of draw on this graph. You may not want to draw on yours um, because I'm going to kind of draw in a race um, to show you the shapes and then I'll write down the, the letters that represent the shapes um, that we're talking about. Okay, so total surplus. So first we want to identify at the market equilibrium. So we're here at this quantity. So we only get surplus out to this quantity, right? That's how many trades we're making. We want to identify consumer surplus, producer surplus, total surplus. So, okay, so consumer and producer surplus, that's the area between the supply and demand curves, right? So we've got our total surplus is going to be equal to B plus C which is consumer surplus and producer surplus. And then we also need to add on the value of the external benefit, which would be the area of A. Okay. So that's our total surplus at the market equilibrium. And now we need to think about total surplus at the socially optimal outcome. So at the socially optimal outcome, so let's see, I'm gonna erase this now. At the socially optimal outcome, Okay, we've come out to this quantity here. So we wanna think about now, what does producer and consumer surplus look like going out to that quantity? So we have the area between supply and demand out to the market equilibrium that's positive, right? We get larger benefit to consumers than we get a cost, than the cost to the firms. But as we extend that out here, now the cost to the firms is higher than the benefit to consumers. So this is actually, it's part of our consumer and producer surplus, but it, it's negative. So our consumer and producer surplus is going to be B plus C minus E. Now, the area of external benefit will again be right, the marginal external benefit times the quantity. So we'll go all the way out here. So that includes A, D, and E in our marginal external benefit. Okay, so now what's the total surplus? So the E area, you can see the E's cancel out. And my total surplus here is B plus C plus A, which is the same as market equilibrium plus D. Okay, so my total surplus at the socially optimal outcome is higher than at the market equilibrium. That is true by definition, because socially optimal means highest total surplus. Um, and it's higher by the amount D. So when I'm looking at this graph, okay, I'm gonna erase again. When I'm looking at this graph, if we're at the market equilibrium, we have deadweight loss, which means lower surplus than we could potentially have. And that deadweight loss is equal to this triangle D. So this is what I want you to label on the graph um, is this triangle D. That's your deadweight loss at your market equilibrium quantity. So deadweight loss is equal to D and we would calculate that by finding the area of that triangle 
which is equal to one half times and my marginal external benefit evaluated at the market equilibrium quantity times the difference in the quantity between the socially optimal quantity and the market equilibrium. All right. Okay, so now in this example, because the marginal external benefit is constant, the area of triangle D is equivalent to the area of triangle E. They're the same, right? So um, because the distance, the vertical distance between the two curves is, um, is, is constant. But that's not always the case, right? This marginal external benefit could be increasing um, as we consume more. And that would mean that we need to pay particular attention to what the marginal external benefit is exactly at this quantity, which is why I've specified that in this equation. All right, so in the next video, we'll do an example with numbers which hopefully will help you to start to digest how to think about positive externalities in the context of markets.